Is it just me or is the past four months in quarantine feel like an entirely different universe than January of 2020? Even in the past few months, staying home has been a journey. So here are some things that helped me stay sane and just general favorites. <sighs> I've split it up into a few categories being doing, buying, reading, watching, listening, and following. First things first, what I've been doing, as it may not be a big surprise to anybody, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing. I mean, at least my islands pop in, right? In all honesty, it was kind of hard to put together a list that was not just solely Animal Crossing because that's almost all I've been doing. In addition to just playing Animal Crossing, consuming all the Animal Crossing related content, the copious amount of memes and TikTok videos. Um, yeah. Animal Crossing was the one thing that made me or convinced me to finally download TikTok. Aside from Animal Crossing, I've also been pen palling a lot, which may not be news to a lot of people based on the amount of times that I've mentioned pen palling in the past few videos, but would recommend. I think pen palling has helped a lot, especially during these past few months because I haven't seen anyone in my age range since like March or February. So it's been like six months. <laughs> since I've seen my friends and I really miss them. So pen palling helps me stay safe. And baking because a rite of passage in terms of quarantine activities. Baking, Animal Crossing, and pen palling. On to the next category of buying. So along with playing Animal Crossing, I've been spending way too much time online shopping, adding things to my cart and then ultimately not buying it. Although occasionally I do cave and buy the thing. And when it does come, I'm usually disappointed and I end up returning it. But on the rare occasion that I'm not disappointed, here are the things that I adore. The first brand that I want to feature is Lazy Oaf. This cardigan is from Lazy Oaf. I've heard about them a long time ago, but then I finally caved and I got some things and I was really, really happy with one, the quality and two, the style. It was like so cute but i'm trying not to vouch for a brand completely because i realize now that more often than not the brands that you think are great in terms of ethics sustainability and style and just like everything are ultimately problematic at its core and i'm talking about reformation and everlane which are two brands that i used to vouch for a lot because i really like their style and their so-called transparency so yeah even though i now love lazy oaf and love the articles of clothing that I've gotten from Lazio if I'm trying not to wholeheartedly vouch for a singular brand because I've been fooled. But for now, I really love Lazio. Moving on. The next thing I want to feature is M Cosmetics Brow Gel. Around a couple months ago, I ran out of my Glossier Boy Brow, which is what I usually use when I'm feeling lazy and I still want to put on makeup but not really put in the effort. And I saw that M Cosmetics released a new brow gel, which is supposedly supposed to replace Boy Brow. And if I'm being completely honest, I was never a really big fan of Boy Brow, but I didn't know other alternatives. So I got M Cosmetics Brow Gel and I ended up really really liking it now it wouldn't be complete without some food as you may or may not know i'm a big fan of big spoon roasters recently i became their ambassador which is really exciting nut butters save me so i've been eating a decent amount of nut butter i got sent their carrot cake walnut butter and it's so good so good to the point where and when i got an email saying they weren't restocking it because it's limited edition i literally went on the website immediately and bought three jars because i already finished my carrot cake jar Zero regrets though, because carrot cake is probably one of my top three favorite cakes and I love nut butters, so yeah. I've been eating a lot of nut butters. If you want 10% off your next order, you can use the code WHIRLINGPAGES10. I'm honestly a big fan. Last but not least, over the past few months, I recently discovered this website called 
Bookshop, which I've been using instead of Amazon and Barnes and Nobles to purchase my books. Basically, Bookshop is a website that helps you support your local indie bookstores while social distancing and shopping online. A lot of times, your local indie may not have a website that lets you purchase directly from them. So I find a bookshop can be a more accessible way to support your local indies. Although I think it's only open to US, maybe Canada. Speaking of books, I actually have not been reading a lot, but I recently finished Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong and it's so good. I highlighted and annotated so many parts of that book because Oof. It was really nice reading from an Asian American's point of view about racism and someone who actually is able to put her thoughts into words unlike me. Okay, moving on. We're talking about watching or things that I've been consuming via my eyes and ears. What's going on? My favorite movie of this past year and of these past few months is by far Little Woman. It's so good. I've already watched it twice. Once by myself, featuring a lot of tears, and another time with my friends via Zoom because I low-key forced them to, but also they wanted to, but... Little Woman's really good, put me in all the vibes, all the feels. Next up, I also really enjoyed Amelie. I feel like I butchered the name, but it's okay. I watched it because I wanted to get more into foreign films. The idea of French cinema is just really... And when I finally did watch it, I was really satisfied because it emulated all the feelings and all the cinematic beauty that I love about movies. Really enjoyed the movie. Would highly recommend. I also watched 13th, which was highly recommended in all of the Black Lives Matter education slash resources list. It is so heartbreaking, honestly. Heartbreaking because of the fact that the 13th Amendment exists and sucks because these are things that we as American students don't learn in school. This is definitely something that I did not learn in school or if it was, it was something that was like skimmed upon. I was gonna say whitewashed. But yeah, kind of like whitewashed. It makes me really angry. A lot of emotions. Would highly, highly recommend especially if you're American and if you're not American and you want to learn about American history and racism then sure. Last but not least on the things that I've been watching. This is not a movie but a TV show which has been one of my favorites for a really long Long time but a new season recently started and I feel like it's especially relevant now and it's patriarch so good first of all the topics that he talks about are all super relevant important informative since he's a comedian he shares it in a way that's easily accessible and understandable for us as readers and viewers I specifically like want to put 50,000 exclamation points on the episode related to Black Lives Matter because Ooh. The show's on Netflix, but I believe all the episodes release on YouTube as well. And the Black Lives Matter episode is only around 10 minutes. But those 10 minutes, man, mm. I've been reposting a lot of Black Lives Matter and like civil rights movement related stuff. But of all of them, that video is probably the one I want everyone to watch because exactly how I feel and also another point on how I feel about being Asian American in this whole situation. Next up, things we're listening to. While we're on the conversation of Black Lives Matter, one of the podcasts that I've been loving is 1619. I've been meaning to listen to it for a while because I listen to New York Times Daily and I remember a while ago it featured some episodes but I just for some reason never went and actually listened to the whole thing from beginning to end. So I did that and oh, it was a really good podcast. I miss listening to podcasts that are kind of like a narrative and have a conclusion. 1619 was a good one. Another podcast that I was listening to around the beginning of quarantine, because I feel like quarantine is split up into a lot of eras, but Song Explorer. It's really cool because the concept is basically an artist breaking down their song and how the song came to be and then ultimately listening to a song. And I like how it explains artist's point of view of their song and adds a lot of layers to the song. I feel a lot more connected to music as a whole. I don't think they upload new episodes very often, but I really like going through the archives. Although I haven't listened to any of their episodes, 
in like the past few months because um yeah but i really enjoyed it a couple months ago next is 17's hengare which was recently released like earlier this week i'm really excited okay this is a spontaneous and extra unboxing because i pre-ordered all four editions of the albums and they're here so i'm gonna open it oh my god Okay, I was really excited for this album and also a little bit confused because it's a DIY album So I think you receive it unassembled and then you put it together and decorate it as you like uh, I think this is the first one. I don't okay. I was gonna say I don't want to destroy the sticker, but too late That's a terrible sound. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I have my faves. I love them so it's so pretty. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna assemble this later, but 17 Tengare. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so excited. Back to what we were talking about. Last but not least, in terms of music, I've been really enjoying Clario's songs. One of her songs appeared on my Spotify Discover Weekly, and then I found an episode of her talking about her song Ale Wife on Song Explorer. So after listening to that podcast, I decided to listen to more of her songs, and I really, really love her music. Although I haven't been listening to her music lately because I've just been listening to Seventeen, but it's okay. Last but not least, following a AKA accounts I've been loving and following for quarantine. First up is Pipa's Art. I hope I'm saying that right. I've been following her for a while, but I recently started to watch a lot of art vlogs or art tutorials. I guess they're tutorials, but I'm not following along. I just like watching people draw and make art because I'm like, whoa, y'all are talented. How? So I've been really enjoying hers. I specifically really enjoyed watching her make an animated GIF slash video video on Procreate that was really fun and cool. Love her work and all these other art people that I've been watching and following. Next is Yuis, who is a Korean YouTuber and I've mostly been obsessed with her food videos because they're all really soothing and ASMR and then after watching her videos I started to watch a lot more other ASMR food videos. I love her food videos. I wish I could pull them off with my own cooking videos or food related videos but I don't know. And those are all the things, people's activities I wanted to feature. I hope you're staying sane during these trying times, especially since it seems like we're gonna stay like this for quite a while, at least in the US. Apparently today was the highest amount of cases in the US. So I'm gonna be staying home till next year and hopefully there will be more things that will keep me sane along with Animal Crossing and all these other things that I mentioned. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!